Hello everyone, and I would like to welcome you to the Studio Critique Design Team for 2019. I am Luke Wright, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a cane I made up called the Delphinium Cane. Um, be sure you also get the free PDF on tinypandora.com. And, well, without further ado, let's jump into supplies. Here I've got six squares of Sculpey Souffle clay in white, black, and purple. Um, I have taken these, they are three by three, on the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And I've taken a white one and I've cut it diagonally just to show you what we're going to be doing. We are going to be taking it, cutting it diagonally, flipping the triangle on itself. Um, make sure you flip the right way. The corner should match up. Then you're going to push down on it to make sure that all of those air bubbles and everything get out of it. Then what you're going to do, I'm going to show you again, you're going to take your blade, kind of get it diagonal, and you're going to cut your triangles out from your square. Here again, find the diagonal line, cut it diagonally. I'll be back when all of these are finished. Here they're all finished, and here I'm showing you that with your two triangles, what you do is, again, I'm restacking them so it makes one triangle. Then with your two different colored triangles, you are now going to take that and make a square. I've made a square with black and white, purple and white, and purple and black in Sculpey Souffle. Now you're going to want to lift them up and you're going to want to put these seams together because you are going to run this through the pasta machine on your thickest setting over and over um, quite a few times until you're happy with your blends and so I'm taking this seam and I'm putting it together so that I, then I'm going to take my roller and roll over it and I will be back when all of my Skinner blends have been Skinner blend out. Okay so here are all my Skinner blends with the purple and white one two three of them as you should have. Um, here again is my purple and white. Here is my black and purple, and the black kind of ate at the purple, but here is my black and white. So now you have to make the components for your delphinium cane, and we are going to start with the purple and white. So you're going to want to cut a straight edge if you don't already have one. I already had one straight edge on the other side, so I just had to cut that and just throw that off to the side. Now I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to cut another straight edge. The other white one, that white straight edge, um, it's okay that it's a little rugged. So now I'm going to flip it, and with the white on the inside, the white should be towards you. You're going to take it and tightly roll a bullseye, or a jelly roll Skinner blend, whatever you prefer the name is. And again, sometimes you see me squishing it inward, that's because I'm rolling it as tight as I can. So, and then you'll also see me pushing the sides because we don't want an extension of our cane yet. So I'm not worried about making a good crease. I'm just going to roll over it because we are now going to reduce this down to four inches. We are going to be working in four inches and six inches increments in this video. So everything you make needs to be four inches. Now that I've got this all reduced out, we are going to do the same thing to the purple and black Skinner blend, except we don't have white on this one. So what we're going to do is we are going to put the purple on the inside. So again, you're going to want to make sure you cut a straight edge. You're going to want to roll it up, making sure to push in those edges. And you're going to want to make sure everything does not extend out on you while you're rolling it. So I will be back when that is finished rolling. Okay, I've got this rolled out. My purple's in the center. And now that's all that's left to do is to do the fold. So you're going to take your black and white Skinner blend. Fold it in half as if you were about to go through the pasta machine one more time. So I'm taking the bottom edge, folding it to the top, just like so. And now what you're going to want to do, you're going to take 
your piece and you're going to run it through the pasta machine long ways just like this you're going to start on a one and you're going to go down to a four so again that's a one and then a, a four all right here is what it should look like once you start at a one then a two then a three and a four it gets pretty long and pretty thin but that's what we need because we do need to fold this up and get it a little tall and a little wide so I'm going to start with the white end touching my surface and we are going to do three inches is going to be our mark for folding. We're going to fold this at the three inch mark. So as you can see here, I am folding it and then I'm going to take it and fold it the other way after I push down. So fold it the other way and fold it the other way. Continue this until you're out of play to fold. This is what mine has looked like. I'm using a cane bender by Teresa Salgado um, from tinypandora.com. I am pushing an indent into my folded piece that I've reduced down again to four inches. I've also rolled out a white piece and I have also, here is that white piece. The other black line stuff that you've seen, I made a striped cane. I don't think I need to explain the striped cane. It's pretty self-explanatory. So all I'm doing here is putting that white piece into the indent that I've made with the cane benders and I'm just going to push that down so that it's all level. I'm not looking for a triangle in this area as I am only looking for um, just roundness. So now I've also rolled out a sheet of white on my thinnest setting. Um, we are going to now build our components starting with the purple and white. We are going to triangulate it up. Basically, we are going to make a triangle out of it, and it will reduce even further, but by like maybe an inch or so. So again, I'm just turning this into a triangle. Here's what that triangle looks like. Now with the purple and black bullseye, what you're gonna wanna do is set everything aside, get out of your way. I just set it to the corner of my work surface. Now with my fingers, I'm gonna push down on this bullseye. This is so we don't have a whole lot of distortion on the inside. Now I'm gonna take my roller and roll over it evenly. Um, do not push hard though, you're just looking to make the surface even. And that's all there is to that. So. Now we've got two of the components done. Now we are going to take back that what the um, black and purple Skinner Blend roll because we have to add a white layer over it and it's only on one side. So um, go ahead and take your white sheet rolled out on the thinnest setting of a pasta machine, minus nine. I'm gonna lay that down on my work surface. I'm gonna set my component on the white and I'm only gonna cut, cut it to size. So as you can see here, I'm cutting both sides off and then I am cutting the ends off. And with what's little left on the sides, you wanna fold that down over the edges. So lift it up with your blade from the bottom and now push those extra white sides cause you want it to go over the side just a little just a little. It'll really make a difference in the end. So here is that component and now that is all done. So now we are going to take this and we need to stack the purple component on top. We stack it on top of the white sheet that we just placed over our other component as you can see here. That's what that looks like on both ends. They obviously won't look pretty yet because we have not cut the ends, but there's no need to cut them now. I'm just making sure everything's a triangle, but if you cut them now, that's a waste of clay. Now, on the other side, or well, any side, you will place your striped cane and roll it out so that it's the length and width of your two pieces you put together. 
and it's okay if it's a little flat, but we want to basically put it on top of the triangle and fold it over the side. Basically, you'll have a whole striped cane on one side with it overlapping the top of the triangle, as you can see what I'm doing here, and that's what that looks like. So we do need to trim that excess off like I did there. So now we are taking our component with the white log in the middle, and the step is so simple. On the other side, opposite of the striped cane, all you do with the white log touching the purple triangle, you just put it on there. And now you just start triangulating things up again. So basically on each side, squeezing it to make a triangle. Um, if you need to take off your striped cane like I do here and re-put it on, that's okay. That just makes sure that your striped cane is overlapping everything. So I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so here's the final product, and now we've got to start reducing. So to do this, you basically just want to pull it out to six inches, cut it in half, and then put your striped cane to your striped cane so that your two white logs are on the outside. Here is what that looks like. So as you can see, my two white logs are on the left and right side of the triangle. That's what it looks like from the front view. And now again, you want to reduce this down to six inches, cut it in half, and marry it together again the same way you did the very first time. Repeat this three more times. Here's our final product. This is what it should look like when you have reduced your cane a total of four times. And this is what the final cane looks like. Um, this is obviously backwards, but here it is frontwards. And now you can do what you want with it. Um, I cover a bottle, as you will see in a minute. I just created a hexagon, you know, six triangles, and then I put it on the bottle. I still have some cane left over, and so here is that bottle. So I want to say thank you so much for watching, you guys. I would love to see what you make. And um, again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye, everyone.